Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is uh, part 10 of the video series Salvation Through Works is Heresy. Uh, as we transition from uh, the last video uh, into this next subject, let's recap, uh, uh, kind of concisely talk about James and, and uh, Paul, their perspectives as they write. I believe that James is really writing from the perspective of a pastor. Uh, I think it's perfectly acceptable for a pastor to tell people, you say you have faith, well, I'm exhorting you, I'm encouraging you to show me your faith. You know, live a good life. Live a life that makes people unse can see that you really are a believer. Show me your faith by your works. Um, so it's uh, perfectly proper for a pastor to exhort and encourage his, his uh, congregation to live uh, a good life um, and to stop sinning. Uh, but we, as we said, uh, James certainly is not saying that you're saved with, uh, because of that. He's just saying that, uh, in my eyes, I'd like to see some work come out of you. you know? And Paul, he's really writing, not from the perspective of a pastor exhorting people to stop sinning, he's writing from the perspective as an evangelist. Kind of our perspective when we do our street preaching, uh, we're not concerned about their uh, lives being changed. We trust the Holy Spirit comes into them and starts changing their lives after they get saved. But it's our job as an evangelist to tell them how to get saved. And it's not because of their uh, show me good, your good religious life. That's not going to save them. We know they're going to be saved because of their faith. And it's, Paul says, in the sight of God, it's only faith that matters for your salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's move on. And uh, here's another verse people send us, uh, trying to make the point that uh, you know more than faith is required for your salvation. Hebrews 12:4. It says, um, uh, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Well, that's true. Without holiness, no one will, will see the Lord. What's the only way to be holy in God's sight? Because sin has separated us. Um, Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except through me. So the only way that I can be righteous and holy and perfect and sinless in God's sight is through His Son, Jesus Christ, who is all of that. Right. Um, so, he, so only by my faith in Christ and only by what He has done on that cross is the only way I can be uh, holy in God's sight. That's a, that's a good way of saying it. So, so basically, uh, the, the only way we're going to achieve the holiness that's required here it is because of faith in Jesus and Him imputing His holiness onto us. Uh, we're never going to achieve the holiness based upon our religious works and our repenting of our sins. Uh, that's that's proof that you know that's exactly why we need Jesus. We are not capable of achieving that holiness on our own. Exactly. I, I, there's a scripture that says that, uh, um, that our righteousness is as filthy rags in God's sight. Mm -hmm. um, so if the best thing I've ever done is a filthy rag in God's sight. Uh, um, how must my sin look to God? So um, it's not uh, me trying to strive to stop sinning or, 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 or me to strive to live a holy life um, that's going to get me to where I can see the Lord. No, it's only Jesus Christ and Him crucified and my faith in that mm -hmm. which is going to uh, give me the holiness I need to be able to see mm -hmm. the Lord. Yes. Um, so the, the holiness that we need to see the Lord, to get into heaven and be with God, uh, we, we gain that through our faith in Jesus Christ, not through our works. But the beginning of that verse, it says, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Make every effort. So this is not saying uh, uh, you must be at peace with all men. You must uh, uh, be holy. He says, make every effort. Now, to me, that's saying that it's not going to be possible necessarily to completely do this, but make your best effort. Make every effort to do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at the uh, the riff that uh, Paul and Barnabas had. You know, they weren't they weren't at peace. Oh, yeah, uh, right, exactly. Uh, you know, um, but both of them were saved. <laughs> both of them trusted Christ as their Savior. They right. were saved. 
Okay. Um, so the question is, uh, to you out there observing, watching this video, is do you have holiness? Uh, if, if you're trying to get this holiness on your own through your religions, through your religious acts you're performing, through your repenting of sin, you're never going to have the holiness necessary to see God. Uh, because we all fall short of the glory of God. Uh, so if you want that holiness so you can see God, you need to trust Jesus' death on the cross for your salvation, and then Jesus will transfer His holiness. He imputes His righteousness onto us because of our faith in Him. Amen. All right, let's let's go on to uh, Revelation um, three five. Uh, it says, "He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels." Now, there's a couple of potential problems in that the, the verse there that people try to throw on our face and say, you know, see, you can. You have to work or you can lose your salvation. First of all, it says, He that overcometh, uh, you will not have your name blotted out. So they want to say, See, you you say you're a Christian, well, you better overcome. You better go the rest of your life and overcome sin. Or you're in trouble. You're going to lose your salvation. Uh, but how do you see overcoming? Well, you have to, uh, Scripture interprets Scripture. The best commentary for the Bible is the Bible. And I know you have another verse here, right? If to it, interpret what it what it means to to be an overcomer. There, there's a couple of verses that specifically tell us what an overcomer is. First John four four says, "You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Who is in them? Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside them, and that is what makes them over, uh, overcomer." And we, in 1 John 5, 4 and 5, it, it goes even further. It says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? He who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. Okay? That's what it says. Only he who believes that Jesus yes. is the Son of God. That's right. Um, so, uh... I mean, that scripture up there in Revelations is, is a great scripture. That scripture is an eternal security scripture. That's a, a, an assurance of my salvation. Uh, a once saved, always saved uh, scripture. Um, because God is telling me that because I put my faith in Christ and what He has done on the cross... You're an overcomer because of that. I'm an overcomer. Okay. And He'll never blot my name out of the book of life. Okay, that's what I want to talk about in the next video, this blotting out, okay? Let's move on to that in the next video.